He was sharing with me some blessings and things that are coming his way. And, and it just made me think about a few things, amen, that how the faithfulness of God, yes. amen, that when you honor God and you put him first and you keep him first, through trials, through tribulations, through ups, through downs, amen, through, through whatever might happen in our lives, if we keep God first, God will give us the desires of our hearts. The book of Joel, chapter 2, and verse 23 says, Be glad that you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts, my great army which I set among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. And in verse 27, that you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there's no other. My people shall never be put to shame. 
God's a blessing. If we keep him first, if we remain faithful unto him, God will restore, God will rebuild, God will provide, and he will cause the overflow in our lives. As long as we remain faithful to him. Let's pray. Father, we come before you tonight and we just thank you for this awesome privilege that we have to give to you. We ask your blessing upon this offering. We ask your blessing upon every tithe, God, every gift, every sacrificial offering that is given today, that is given in your house, God, we lift it up to you, and we ask your blessing upon it, God, that you cause it to multiply and bless our homes and our families, God, and to your church, that we may continue your word faithfully. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
I thank you, God, for every family, every individual that is here tonight, my brothers, my sisters. I pray, Lord, that you would just have your way, Lord. Speak to us. Encourage us tonight, Father, through your word, by your spirit, Lord. I pray, Father, for understanding, Lord. Help us to apply your word to our life and walk victorious as God's people. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Title this, a title of this, uh, this, this message tonight, The Effective Father. The Effective Father. We all know what's coming up on this Sunday, right? This weekend. What's, what makes this weekend special? Father's Day. Father's Day, yes. I'm looking forward to Father's Day. I look forward to the, the Father, Father Day breakfast, the Father Day kiss, the hug, the little gift. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing my children in the morning come up to me and hug me and give me their little. The little uh, whatever is they made me for the year. I look forward to that, right? Right, fathers? Yeah, it's out there. I look yeah. forward to that. enjoying that Father's Day, right? It's a special. It's a special day for fathers. I know Mom's Day, Mother's Day came by, and I know Mother's Day. They mothers, you enjoyed it, right? Moms, you enjoyed it. You worked a lot. A lot of work. Us guys, as far as me for myself, I cannot do. I cannot do what, what, what my wife does. They, they, they carry a, the, the load, right? Right, dads? We can't do it without mom. Amen. Right. But this is our weekend, though. <laughs> <laughs> this is that one time we can actually sit back and enjoy the day and let mom, let mom take care of us, right? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Father's Day. You know, tonight, I, I, like, I like to speak to the fathers that have children yeah. and the, 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 the one day the future fathers. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Brother right there. <laughs> that has to be a dad one day. The future fathers. Because fathers are very important. They're a vital role of, 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 of the family. They're a vital role of the family. Um, and it's sad to say there's not a lot of fathers at homes these days. You know, I, I, I work with more teachers in class. You know, oftentimes half the class, half the kids don't have dads. And it's tough. It's hard. It's heartbreaking to see that. You know, um, I was fortunate, you know, and blessed uh, to have a father growing up. To have a dad in my life who was there to show me the ropes, to uh, teach me things. And, you know, dads play an important role in a in a home, you know, us, the dads, you know, how many dads we got here today? How many fathers? Yeah, quite a few fathers. How many future fathers? All right. Two brothers. All right. Back. All right. And, it, it, and we, we play a vital role in the home, okay? You know, we're the president. But then, you know, sometimes, but, but then that kind of goes back and forth sometimes because, you know, mom, the wife usually, you know, we get, we get beetled out, um, you know, in our decisions, but... <laughs> And that's for another day, but um, but as 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 fathers, we play a vital vital role. You know, I was reading. I was reading. Um, there's a difference between a father and a dad. I don't know if you guys know this. You guys know the difference between a father and a dad. Read it to you. Interesting. A father. Okay. Um, a father is someone who believes that by donating his sperm for 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 a kid's creation. He has done his duty in life. A dad is someone who gets up every day and does whatever he can to put a roof over your head, clothes on your back, and food on your table. How many dads we got? It's not easy, right? Being a dad is not easy. It, 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 is, it is a difficult task, but we do it anyways because we love our families, right? Dads, we love our wife, we love our children. They drive us crazy. Amen? No? It's just me? They drive me crazy sometimes. But we still love the blessings God gave us. Right? We made them. They're our blessings. We can enjoy them. Teach them. Dads play an important role in the lives of their children. Has anyone ever heard of James Boswell? You know who James Boswell is? The English biographer. There's a story 
uh, uh, um, regarding James Boswell. He was he was most known for writing a biography of, of Samuel Johnson, Samuel Johnson, the English writer. You know, um, uh, one of the most important figures of the 18th century culture. Um, and he, he did a, a story, a biography of Samuel Johnson's life, and that was one of his greatest achievements that, that he ever made. Um, and when they were interviewing him, they asked him this. They, they asked him a question, you know, you know, regarding you know uh, his, his his upbringing, um, his life, and um, they asked him, what played a important role in your life. And he said this. He says. Um, that he often referred to a special day in his childhood when his father took him fishing. The day was fixed in his mind, and he often reflected upon many things his father had taught him in the course of their fishing experience together. After having heard of that particular excursion so often, it occurred to someone much later to check the journal that Boswell's father kept and determine what had been said about the fishing trip from the parental perspective. Turning to that date, the reader found only one sentence entered. His dad said, gone fishing today with my son, a day wasted. A day wasted. You know, as fathers, you know, um, there are things and moments in our life that man may, we can consider to be unimportant. Things that we consider to be all oh, like, say for instance, take the kids outside to go play, right? You're asking ask me, take the kids outside to play. Do you want to go? No, I don't want to go outside. It's hot outside. But little things that, 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 that we do for our children that we think nothing much of it could be the most special day in their life. It could be that day that you set an example for them by how you act, how you react, what you speak, what you say, what you do in that moment. It could stay within their minds. This, this James Boswell, that day with his father, that fishing trip, meant everything to him. Later on in his life, as he was successful, um, he often thought about that day because he learned a lot from his dad on that fishing trip. It was special to him. It was dear to him. It was a, a moment in his life that he could always reflect and say, I had that day with my dad. That was the day he taught me this. The day he taught me that. The day he taught me to, to, to change the t a flat tire. The day he taught me to, to do a tune-up. The day he taught me to shave. The little things that, you know, hey, fathers, dads, that, that, that we learned growing up, right? Or maybe we were forced to learn. Maybe, maybe some of you guys didn't have a father growing up, but you're a father now. You're a dad, and who do you have under you? Your children. It is our place as fathers to bring up our children. Like the Bible says in Proverbs, 6, uh, or Proverbs 22, verse 16, train up your child in the way that you should go, in the way of God. So that they'll walk the right path, that they'll be successful in life, right? Because James Boswell, that 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 man, he loved. He that moment meant everything to him. But what did his dad think of it? What does that think of it? Nothing, unimportant to him. Just another day. If I didn't want to go fishing, if I didn't want to go out there and go to work that day, hard labor. But he knew he had a family that he had to take care of, right? Oftentimes, as fathers, there's things that we do for our families that, man, we wish we could be at Disneyland that day or on the beach or somewhere else, right? Right, dads? Many times we just, can I just have a break? Can I just go to the restroom and know that no one's going to knock on the door when I'm in the restroom for some 10 minutes? You know, I just want to break. You know, there's times we just want to break. We, we just want to, we want to just sit back. And then when we find that moment, it comes around. Mommy comes around. What are you doing? Get up! You know that Charlie asked you to do? Go throw out the trash. It stinks. The, the, the kitchen smells. You know, throw out the trash. And I go, okay, there goes, that, there goes my moment. But we do it because we love our families. We get up. We do what we got to do because we love our families. Those things that we consider to be unimportant, just another task, another duty, another job. They mean everything to our family. Those times when your wife tells you, I appreciate you going to work every day, putting up with your boss, putting up with your job, you do it for us. I thank you for that. Don't, doesn't that make you feel special, dads, fathers, to, to, to hear that? 
It means something dear to us because, man, it, it, it just, I don't know, it makes you feel good as, as, as a father that you're doing something great. You're doing something more than, than just your, for yourself. You see your kids, you come home and your kids just run to you and they hug you and say, thanks, Dad, you're the best. Don't you just love when they tell you that? Or they draw you a picture, you don't know exactly what it is, but you just you, you love that picture they made you, yeah. you know? Um, my, my, my daughter drew draws me pictures and draws me with long hair that I can comb to the side. I love it, you know? I enjoy that. It's something special to me. It's not accurate, but it's something special to me. <laughs> Those special moments that we have as dads, Make up for everything that we go through. We must just forget everything that we put up with every day, right? Right? Those things that we consider that, that don't think uh, that important are important to them. Be something special to them. The things we do for them. The, 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 the example we're setting for our kids. When you do you guys a quote. I believe that when what we become depends on what our fathers teach us at odd moments, when they aren't trying to teach us, we are formed by little scraps of wisdom. Did I said that? Yeah. It's in those moments, those odd moments, when we're not trying to teach our children, dads, in those days we're just doing our duty, or, or the days that they're learning from us, they're learning our example. They're learning that when we're on the freeway and someone cuts us off and we don't honk or we don't go down the window and scream at them, we're saying an example to them. Don't let, your, don't let your anger get the best of you, right? When you're at the store and our kids are next to us and they give us an extra $10 and then also get an extra 10 bucks on your change, right? Maybe, maybe, anyone ever get change, an extra few dollars on your change back? And you're like, oh, praise God, you put in your pocket, you can put in your pocket, walk away, but you don't. And you take it back and you say, come on, let's go back. Like, why, Dad? We just came out of the store. We've been there for an hour. Let's go back. We've got something we got to do. And you go out to the cashier and you say, hey, you gave me an extra $5. And you give it back to the, to the cashier. What are you teaching your child? Honest. These little things that you think nothing much, you're just doing your duty, you're doing your thing, but you're teaching your kids. Because who's always watching? Your kids. Who's always listening to you when you're talking to your wife? Your kids. Who's always there? Why my daughter likes this. I, think I call her my ninja, my spy. My spy. She's always listening on every conversation. She knows. She knows what we're talking about. Sometimes she answers back. Huh. <laughs> kids are always looking. They're always watching, right? They're always watching. My kids are... My oldest are six years old. I, I haven't made it to teenage years yet. You know, so for me as a father, I'm still learning a lot. You know, I haven't, I haven't got that far yet. You know, um, but regardless of age, they always watch. They always listen. Because remember, we were kids once. We heard everything, right? We heard everything. We know what's going on. We know the gossip and the drama, right? <laughs> You see, the scripture we're looking at is the Bible says, train up your child in the way that he should go, right? God's way. God's word. Okay. Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, um, a parent, a father that I like to look at, you know, we all heard of, we all know who Joseph, right? Joseph and Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Remember Joseph, the story of Joseph, the man who was going to get married to, to Mary, and then he had to find out that she was pregnant. But, but what, did he, what did he want to do? The Bible says he wanted to get rid, you know, get rid of her secretly. He had respect for her. He wanted to just walk away because he knew it wasn't his son, his child, right? But we know that Joseph played a vital role in Jesus' life. Did you know that? He might not have been his physical, biological father, but he played a vital role. I want to read you something. Really fast. Joseph's influence during the early years on Jesus' life must have been incredible. 
When Jesus spoke of God as being like a loving father, he could draw from his youth the kind of love he had from Joseph. Joseph stands as a testimony to the value of integrity, obedience, faithfulness, and especially to honoring the entrusted role of a father. Even though he was not his biological father, he took on that role. Every year by year, um, Joseph, if you read the scriptures, um, what, you know, he always took Mary and Jesus to the, temp, to, to the temple, right, to Jerusalem for the Passover. He understood the importance of taking his family to church, to God's house, setting that role. We do, know, we do not know how long Joseph lived, lived as a role as Jesus' earthly father. He is last mentioned when Jesus was 12 years old. But, Jesus, but Joseph trained his son in the trade of carpentry, made sure he had a good spiritual training in Nazareth, and took the whole family on a yearly trip to Jerusalem for the Passover, which Jesus continued to observe during his adult years. Joseph knew Jesus was someone special from the moment he heard the angel's words. His strong belief in the fact that his willingness to follow God's leading empowered him to be Jesus' chosen earthly father. He took on that role. He taught Jesus things that would stay with him for the rest of his life. Even though he was the, the true Messiah, the Son of God, but yet, what was he? He was known to be what? A carpenter, right? Who, who did he learn it from? Joseph. Joseph taught him his trade. It just even mere going to church, attending the Passover, even in his older age, he learned it from Joseph. Because if you read the scriptures, when Jesus was a child, he went to the temple, right? It was a yearly thing. He, he took time to teach his children the importance of serving God, a loving God, and stayed with Jesus. And Jesus continued to, to practice this even in his, in, in his ministry years. You know, it's vital for us, us dads, future fathers, we play a vital role in the lives of our kids in our home. You know, my, my, I, I'm blessed to have my dad. I learned a lot from my dad. Uh, the, uh, the man I am today is because of my father, because he took the time to teach me. I, I know my dad's not perfect, and I know he has his mistakes, you know, and, and his drama and stuff. And there's things that they know that, that I've witnessed growing up in life, you know, um, the road rage. <laughs> he's mentioned that. I only say it because he's mentioned that. You know, you know, but nobody is perfect. No, none of us here as a father, I can say I'm not perfect. Right? Dads, if we can truly be honest, man, we make a lot of mistakes. But we learn from them, right? With God's help, all things are possible. That we can become a better man, a better father, a better husband, a better spouse. But my dad, you know, taught me many different things. And one thing that always stayed with me is that he taught me to, the importance of serving God. Put it, put it, to make sure that my priority is God first. God number one. The priority of, of, of waking up in the morning to pray, of reading God's word, of, of paying my tithes, my offering, of being obedient to God's word even when no one's looking, even when no one is around. When I get that extra five dollars and a change, I'm not, I need to be honest. I gotta, I gotta take this back. This doesn't belong to me. I gotta speak truth. And there's times when I, it's hard sometimes, but God, I ask for help. And sometimes that's all we can ever do as a dad is, is ask our Heavenly Father, our spiritual Father, for help. But what I'm trying to say is that I learned a lot from my dad. And I appreciate you, dad, very much. And now, as a father, what my father taught me, I can teach my kids. I can teach my sons and my daughters. You know, for, for some of the dads here, if you didn't have a dad growing up, just know that you're a dad now. What are you going to do? Be there for your children. All those times when we thought, man, you could do it better, this is your chance to have it better for your kids. To make things right. And I know we, we can't, as fathers, we can't do it by ourselves. So who do we got? Who lives within us? Who do we call out to in, in, in that early morning when no one was around and we were broken and we were crying and we had nobody there with us but him? Who was it? God. Who will help you to be a, an excellent father, an excellent father, effective father? God can. Amen. Okay. Those little things that we do every day, dads, 
future dads, the way we love our wife, the way we read and take time to study God's word, the importance of, man, we got to be at church on Wednesdays, we got to be at church on Friday. Man, I know they're having a, a birthday party or something's going on with their family, but you know what? We got to be at our church, we got to be in God's house on Sunday because we're setting that tone. The way um, we play with our children, the way we speak with our children, speak kindly with them, the way we see, um, the, the way we interact with other people, we're setting a, a role model to our, our kids. They're watching everything. You know, I, I remember those times, and one of the things that stick out to me is the way my dad always talks with people, how he speaks with people, and how it's never to judge or belittle or put down people, but always to talk to people, and all races, all, all, races, all colors, all creeds, even other languages, wherever we've been. I've always noticed that my father just has a way with talking to people, making people feel like, can. Yeah, you're special, dude, or, or, or you know, you're, you're special, you're important. Um, I see you. You know, we set that tone for our kids. We set that example in their life, and they watch us. They watch us. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, as we're getting ready to uh, wind down. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and verse 5. It's a blessing being a dad, right? That's, it is a blessing. I would have traded for nothing in the world. I love it. I love being a dad. Not an easy job, but something that I would that I would I, I wouldn't take or trade for nothing in this world. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse five. It says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall write them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your, and on your gates, by your door in your home. Our job is to, as fathers, our, as dads, our goal is to impart God into the into the lives, into our kids' lives, the lives of our children. To impart God into them. Because money will come and go, careers will come and go, but what, what, what will always remain the same? But will always be their foundation. God. Amen? Amen. God. Because if you if we if we take the time to impart God into their life, and the Bible says they will never depart. They will never be lost. Because they will always have that foundation you laid for them, you set for them, not just by words, but by your exampleship, by your mentorship. Right? Dads? The dads. We got a we, we got we got a big role. It's not easy. There's not too many of us. But we can do it. Because we got God on our side. We can do it. And God will use us to raise our children. That one day when they become adults and they get married and they have their children, what we teach them now, they'll teach them, they'll teach that to their children. And just go on and on. And one thing that will always last is the word of God, the love of God, the service of God, the importance of God in your life. Something that's a world can never take away, that will never expire, that will never end. So, dads, in conclusion, never think of any moment with your child as a day wasted because it may be the most special day in their life. So tonight as we, um, as we get ready to close, what I'd like to do is, um, if you're a dad tonight, I'd like to ask you to come forward, I'm gonna pray with you, dads, because we need God's help, right? We need God's help. It's a special role that we play. And we can't do it alone. We need God's help. So if you're a dad, come to the front. 
I want to pray with I want to pray for the dads tonight. Tonight, like I said, tonight I'm focusing on dads that have children. Dads that are here tonight, fathers that have children whose job is to teach our, their children the word of God. And for the future dads. Because God is going to use us to teach our children to be the people of God that he wants them to be. I remember my dad always teaching us to always teaching us to pray and put on the whole armor of God. He did that when we were kids. Pray, put on the helmet of salvation, the rest of the righteousness, the belt of truth, the boots, child of preparation, gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. He taught us to fight. I remember them teaching us that at a young age, pray and, and, and say it, speak it. To this day, I still say it. To this day, I share it with my children. I we, we, we pray with them, and together we put on that full armor of God. Because what we learn, we teach our children. What they learn, they'll teach their children. So let's teach them right with God's help. We'll teach them to serve God. And God can use them in any way, in any capacity he wants to be. Because God can use anyone to reach the world. So you never know where they're going. For those of you guys that are, that are in, your, in your seats, you can just reach out your hands tonight. Let's pray for the dads that are here. Help us pray. God, that God would just strengthen them. God would just fill them with the Spirit. And that God would help them every day to cherish every moment they have with their child and never think of it as a day.
Let's worship God. Let's worship God.